Yo, what's going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Uh, day two of COVID for me and uh, yeah, I don't know. I still really feel like crap. It's like hard to breathe, hard to sleep. Uh, I feel sick. I have a sore throat. I have a cough, you know, the whole thing going on. But at least there was competitive League of Legends today. That was a good thing. You know, I just got to kind of chill in my room because you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere um, and just watch and, and play video games and watch video games and stuff all day. So that was nice. And obviously now that we've seen a full day of competitive League of Legends in both the LEC and the LCS, we need to start breaking down some of the storylines. Uh, and I don't think it's too early just yet. I know some people definitely will to do our first is finished video of the year and ask ourselves a question, you know, is perks finished because uh you know this vitality super team was coming into the lec season with all these expectations all these goals all these um you know things that they needed to accomplish throughout this year these things that they needed to do and perks was at the back of so much of it um and obviously at least the first day of the lec did not go their way and that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video so definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy it. i would appreciate that so so much uh subscribe save today and all of my latest content and consider checking out the merch first link in the description below and the boxes underneath um with that being said let's get right into this so I know many of you guys know, and we've talked about this before on the channel, that I was really, really um, critical of Perks' play last year. You know, I thought he was good. At times, I thought he was okay or bad, and very rarely did I think he was great, especially in North America, which obviously the LCS is considered, you know, a lesser league overall, especially when you look at the mid laners, the mid lane talent, it's considered a lesser league overall. You know, there wasn't even Bjergsen in the LCS last year, um, and Perks came over, and he he wasn't dominant, and even if you thought he was good domestically, um, you know, like, that's great, whatever, I, I would still argue with that, but he was for sure a weakness of this team uh, internationally. You know, like this team went to MSI and, and Perks was a reason that they lost a couple of those games. Perks was not their best or second best or probably even their third best performing player at MSI. Uh, and then, you know, you fast forward to Worlds and, and yes, obviously this team did make it out of groups at Worlds. But again, was Perks their best? Was he their second best player at Worlds? Was he a reason that they won games? Or sometimes was he a reason that they lost games? And then again, ultimately, they get 3-0'd in the quarterfinals. So, you know, if you take a look at the season as a whole, and you didn't watch any of the games, and you don't really follow the LCS, and you don't really know what you're talking about, you could say Perks had a good season. He won an LCS title, he made it out of groups at Worlds, he made it to MSI, you know, he, he checked all the boxes that they were supposed to check, but again, um, he did not fit the mold of, of Perks, the best Western player of all time, or the second best Western player of all time, or whatever, um, or for sure the guy who's supposed to come in and stomp the LCS, that is just not what happened, um, but people thought, you know, we heard all these things about, hey, you know, he was coming over North America, you know, the solo queue sucks, the coaching staff sucks, he didn't get along with the team, the team didn't get along with him, him and Blabber didn't mesh, they didn't play well, Cloud9 didn't like his leadership style or, or you know, whatever, we heard all these different things, so then now, him returning back to Europe, he'll get to be at home, he'll get to be comfortable, this is now his second season playing mid, so you can't really say, oh, hey, you know, he's just getting back in a mid lane still, um, he pretty much got to handpick the players around him, so they should all be down for his leadership style, be down for his play style, you know, everything should be catered perfectly to perks. So now, this season in the LEC with Team Vitality, we will actually get to see, you know, is perks... I don't know what the word is, because it's not like washed up. It's not like he's so old, it's not like he's past his prime, anything like that, but... Yeah, some players, um, for whatever reason, whether the meta changes or the playstyle changes or the champions change or, or whatever, or they just can't regain their old form... Could we be seeing that with Perks? Are Perks' best days potentially behind him? This is a guy who's had very, very high highs. You know, he's made it to World Finals. He's won MSI. He's done all these things. Um, and not being able to get back to that mark is, is you know, nothing. nothing's wrong with that. You can still be a very, very good player who can't quite get back to that limit. But, you know, is Perks still that guy who is going to solo carry a team? And, and I just don't know. Again, these questions are coming up because Vitality did not play well in the first game, and I wanted to go over a couple of clips from the game um, with Mad Lions where I really start to question Perks' play and some of the weird random stuff we saw him doing in the LCS, also carrying over to this first game in the LEC, because I know last year, you know, there was like the Perks needs to be held accountable thread that got upvoted to Reddit, and then all the European fans came out and was like, oh, you think Perks needs to get held accountable? He won an LCS title against a backup jungler for Team Liquid in five games. Oh, he made it out of groups at World 
They were down 2-0 to TSM uh, and probably should have lost if TSM wasn't also terrible and threw that away, you know, so easily. The, they were like a couple plays away from last year being disaster for Cloud9. But anyway, um, this is about three and a half minutes into game one against Mad Lions, first game of the season. He's playing Akshan into Yasuo, um, obviously a matchup that you want to bully early, you know, he's pushed up, this is going to happen, you're going to be susceptible to ganks, things like this are going to happen, and when you have a lane like this, I think it's really, really important for that mid-jung synergy to come into play, you know, playing around covering uh, the mid laners, so you can actually push in, shove in the wave, stuff like that, I think you'd need to have, like, you know, an overabundance of vision, I think you'd want to, this might be a lane where maybe you go with, like, double pink ward, or, you know, have some extra crazy setup um, to, to allow the Akshan to keep pushing into the Oswald, to keep bullying him, to keep harassing him, because, look, you see, you know, Perks has an 11 CS lead, um, he, he's done a good job at actually harassing the Oswald early, Reeker even said in the post-game interview that, yeah, he played the early levels terrible, um, but, you know, here we see what happens perks has a, a trinket ward up here has no vision on the map he's kind of overextending um and then we'll see el yoya on the diana and the nautilus begin to push into his lane um and now at this point you know i don't necessarily know what you do i know as the octron you can hook shot onto the wall and get out maybe you could instant flash here that feels kind of bad i don't really think that's what you do i think most of the time you just kind of hook shot out um i i don't know if perks's e is up or not i know he ends up hook shotting so maybe i'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say his e is just like about to come off cooldown or something we don't know that for sure um but then we do know that right about here obviously the nautilus flashes onto him and at this point to me it makes no sense to not flash away um from this nautilus hook you know at least in my opinion you should be able to flash into the bush into the river and, and eat out you know he's not he has no worries about flashing uh into the other team top side he has vision of the top laner he knows where the whole enemy team is um you know it, it should be safe um but obviously he decides to try and hook shot onto the wall there saves his flash dies you know whatever he was in a three-man kind of gank there maybe saving his flash is the best idea i don't know but it seems like he had chances to live there um and just didn't end up doing it um but now he does still have his flash you know it should be hard to punish him um so here we go six and a half minutes into the game you know it's about three minutes later um once again uh you can see in the mini map i know i'm covering it up but it would be really small anyway uh Matt, or Vitality has no vision around him. Um, they have, they did take the Scuttle Crab on the top side, so they have that. But Perch is sitting on two trinkets. He has a zero vision score at six and a half minutes into the game. He's sitting on two trinkets. They don't have a Pink Warden top bush or bot bush. Selfmade is there on the top side hovering him, but you see that doesn't stop El Yoya from ganking on the top side anyway. Um, and then, you know, Perch is pushing in again. You know, he's getting the shove. He's overextended and he dies to the gank. He tries to hook shot out. He gets killed there. You know, that one, not as avoidable because um he wasn't going to be able to like flash anything there no matter what that play he for sure was dead but they just have no vision at all again rather than using self-made to help cover with extra vision perks himself isn't even using vision he's sitting on two trinket wards six and a half minutes into the game why is he not putting these down why is he not using vision why is he not you know trying to snuff out these ganks um you know is, is the top side scuttle crab just enough to to keep you alive keep you safe clearly not um so i think it's these random weird over aggressive very very bad deaths that we saw in the lcs um and it's just kind of sloppy you know not not being fundamentally sound um and again it is tough and i know a lot of people are saying hey akshan's going to be very very tough to play in the yasuo diana post six you know they're kind of trolling they're kind of inting this is a really really bad pick but also at the same time guess what the coach didn't just tell perks to play Octon. Per perks absolutely has a very very strong hand in the draft if not he was the one who entirely said to pick Octon there you know this is a very very veteran player and a leader on this team it's not like they're just picking champions um without getting the okay from him or anything like that um so yes this was a hard matchup this was a hard um you know kind of situational play around if, if you are perks but i do think he played it very very poorly um and you know he was against a uh, a rookie mid laner in reeker in a flash ignite matchup this was a chance to you know really body reeker and if you're if you're going to be one of the best players in the league this year you know i think this is where you kind of have a statement lane have a statement game to start the season um but mad lions handled them you know very very well and i think perks ended up like zero five zero or something like that yeah zero five four um overall i just thought it was a really really sloppy game from him with a lot of bad deaths uh and it was just giving me flashbacks to a lot of the 
games. Obviously, I watch a ton of LCS. I, I followed Cloud9 throughout the whole season, and it just gave me a lot of flashbacks to that same perks we saw last season, that over-aggressive, sloppy, um, carefree, kind of reckless, just bad deaths all around. Obviously, Team Vitality as a whole did not play great. I thought Alfari had moments where he was okay. I thought Karzy looked pretty good overall. Um, I don't really think Selfmade did much of anything, but man, perks really stood out to me when he's supposed to be the guy. You know, he's kind of the guy who set this whole thing up. He's the, the face of the franchise. He's the leader for the team. He needs to come out and have better performances. And yes, I think we need to get back to, yes, holding perks accountable. Again, this is just one game into the season. It's not the end of the world. It's not time to overreact. But I do think it's fair to start asking the question, you know, are we ever going to see that that old perks again are we ever going to see perks come out and be the best player in the lec because he was not the best player in the lcs last year and he wouldn't have been playing good enough to be the best player in the lec either um and if vitality wants to be a team that wins multiple titles and goes on to worlds and, and makes it to the semifinals at worlds or whatever perks is going to need to at least be in that conversation for best player in the lec uh and again one game in so far uh zero five four now We've seen Perks have slow starts before. We've seen him int random games here and there before. But I just think the the ways that he's inting, the ways that he's dying, the mistakes he's making um, are, are kind of not good. I think part of it was him individually. And then again, I think part of it also, he could have got a little bit more help from his team uh, and probably a little bit more help in the draft. But yeah, is Perks finished? I don't know, but if he puts a, puts together a couple more of these games, uh, we start seeing that, you know, 2021 LCS perks, and now in the LEC, I think he's going to get punished harder, punished more often, uh, and I think people are really going to start to understand maybe what we had to watch a little bit in the LCS last year. But that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Leave a comment down below. Uh, do you think perks is finished, or do you think he's going to be just fine? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, save today, and all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.